again, so carry on. Today, we're going to be making something new and exciting. <laughs> Look, it, uh, it's got lights. Whoa, it can go fucking hell. What's it even doing, guys? Oh, what is that? Oh, what's happening? It can control this wireless thing. It's a controller. It's a controller for the microbit orchestra. And... Hello. What does it do? You're probably wondering. It does a bunch of difference. For example, now, it's uh, sequencing this thing. It's sending radio messages to this uh, thingy over here. If I plug that in, we just start sequencing things here. We can just put some... So this is a step sequencer. Tempo control here. We can control all the different things on here. Basically what it's doing, it's uh, sending the notes via Bluetooth to this micro bit here. This micro bit is controlling all of these uh, little homemade breadboard synthesizers. Basically all of these here are 40106 uh, Hex Schmidt trigger inverter chips. Gonna be making one of these. Uh, obviously, <laughs> I've already made one. Uh, so we're gonna be making, I need some more. I need I need at least three more of these things. Uh, and there's a lot of wires inside. I mean, look, this is this is the prototype, this one here. Let's see if we can manage to open this thing up. Ow! This, I should probably come up with a better way of closing these up. But if you like, yank the back off! There. Look at that, That's, that looks really sensible. In cable management. Look at it, beautiful. So I'm gonna make three more of these. Um, I'm gonna try and make it look a little bit nicer inside, uh, cause this is a little bit, you know, it is pretty cool, but it could be cool. Let's get, let's have a look at what kind of crap I've got really to do this with. This is like laser cut through with yeah. Lots holes in this. Um, of course I need some of these uh, launch pads. Oh look, it fits. Isn't that amazing? Um, in addition to that, uh, we're gonna need some uh, microcontrollers. I've got, some, I've got them, don't worry, I've got them. I'm gonna be, I'll explain later. I'll explain how it all sticks together because it's, it's a bit of a mess, really. And there's lots of code. This code wants to go inside here. In there the code goes. Don't worry about that, I'll do that. You can just watch. I guess I'm going to start by getting, opening this up. Guess what? There's more screws. There's also a screw there. Oh, uh, if you're doing this, then remember it's going to get wrecked. This and this, we don't want that. This is called a flappy thing, and this is called a green. It's actually the circuit board. It's these little chips are, what are these chips from here? But shift register, let's guess that is there. Here, here is the uh, microcontroller, I guess you can call it. It takes care of doing the USB and all that stuff. And we can see here, it's actually a STM32 something. I've actually used this to make the clock tap, um, tap tempo pedal thingy. This is a crystal, a, uh, this, this is basically a clock. You can see that this has two rings, an outer ring and an inner ring with a, a little gap, a star-shaped gap in between. And then uh, the rubber pads here, they have this black conductive ring that when you push it down, it'll, it'll go across this kind of star shape here and it'll uh, short circuit the outer ring to the inner ring. That's how it knows the button's pushed. What I want to do now is I want to mount this on here. So this thing, where oh, does it go? These, I want to go in these holes here. I want to put a ground wire in between these.
now everything that wants to be grounded here is grounded uh, and they all just need to be connected to the different pins that they go to. So, <clears throat> might recognize this from the other day, this is one of the circuit boards we soldered in the previous video and uh, that's going to be connected, connected to a micro bit, basically it's a breakout board, in it, mate. Hex, stand off. I made some other stuff while you weren't looking. I made these power distribution boards to connect everything up to 5 volts and uh, ground. Okay, the circuit boards are finished. And that means that the next step is... devices what we'll be using it as I've taken the USB cable that's coming in here because if I just run it straight into the pro micro which is there um, it's gonna go through some fuses which are gonna limit the current so that the current is too little to feed this great big thing which wants a lot of current for its lights so what I have to do is I have to kind of hijack the power on the incoming USB uh, before it goes through the fuses in here. In all USB cables like this, you always have uh, five volts on the red cable, ground on the black cable, and then data plus is on the green, and data minus is on the white cable. Uh, so I want to just connect the data cables. <laughs> Good. Pins on there, and we have, well, should have 3.3 volts. And it's 3.25, close enough. So between there and there, we should also have 3 volts. We do. Between there and there, we should have 
five volts and we have 4.9 which is close enough so it looks like looks like all the voltages work the micro bit and it will draw a little bit of current um, and it's managing to power the next step the next step now uh, now that everything's all nicely wired up here again see all this has got the Okay, I did forget to explain how everything is connected together, so I think I'll just uh, do that now. And I probably mentioned, at the heart of the whole system, there's an Arduino Pro Micro. So that's where most of the code I've written is running, and uh, this also uh, runs the sequencer and scans and checks all the buttons and switches and knobs and sees if they've changed. Another important part is, of course, the launch pad. The launch pad uh, has to communicate with the Pro Micro to tell it uh, what buttons have been pressed and the Pro Micro has to tell the launch pad what lights to turn on. But the launch pad uh, uses USB MIDI and we're using the USB MIDI on the Pro Micro to talk to a computer. So we've only got serial port free. Uh, that's why we need to use a uh, USB to serial converter from Hobbytronics. Then of course we need a micro bit to send the radio messages out to the rest of the orchestra. And this wants to communicate with that via I2C. The micro bit can't act as an I2C slave, so the Pro Micro can't just send information to the micro bit. The micro bit has to ask for it. But the micro bit doesn't know when the Pro Micro needs to send information. We need an interrupt. The interrupt wire is uh, basically just so that the uh, Pro Micro can tell the micro bit when it's time to ask for information. So as soon as this uh, pin goes high, then uh, the micro bit asks for some data, which it then sends out to the rest of the uh, micro bit uh, orchestra. Now that we've uh, saved the USB interface on the Pro Micro, we can use that to talk to a computer. So now the uh, computer can use some music software and we can play music and compose music uh, on the Microbit Orchestra using standard USB MIDI. It works. It looks kind of complicated here, but uh, if we look inside my old prototype, uh, it looks even more messy. We have, well, we have the battery, of course, which is just supplying power to this uh, 5 volt regulator down there. Pro Micro here is connected through these uh, logic converters that converts between 5 volts and 3 volts to the micro bit up here using I2C and it's communicating to the launch pad through this Hobbytronics uh, which is hidden in here, this Hobbytronics USB to serial converter and then all the buttons and switches and knobs just go straight into the Pro Micro and it reads them manually. So the next step is to program this. That's why I've got the code here. I've got all the code up on the screen here. This is uh, just plug into there, I guess. Try and compile and upload. And it says it's compiled and it's uploading. And it's finished. And there we go. Wait a minute. Oh, yeah. There's no connection across here. Six, six errors. So I made the things, here they are, very, very successful. So I thought I'd just take this opportunity to mention that I've, uh, I've started a Patreon uh, because after making two of these videos, I realized that it does actually take quite a lot of time and a lot of work. Uh, but I really want to make these videos and I'd like to make more videos that are a little bit more in-depth and more like tutorials and, and how to do different things and, you know, where you can learn a bit more. So if you're interested in uh, in me doing that kind of stuff, if you're interested in electronics or interested in learning how to make a lot of this stuff yourself, then please do consider becoming a patron because uh, that will help me, you know, be able to have time and resources to actually put these videos together.
And I'd love to also be able to make videos about, uh, you know, music production and using all this gear that I make uh, to actually make some music with and, and techniques that I that I use there. Uh, that would be cool. So now that I've built all these uh, mother brains, uh, I thought it's probably a good idea to make a video showing you how they actually work, you know, how I use them to make music and to control maybe the whole the whole microbit orchestra installation that's set up at the museum here in Oslo. Uh, so that'll be a video coming soon, because uh, they're pretty cool, you can do quite a lot of creative stuff with them.